welcome back. Yep, it's Lady Slaughter again, and I am joining here. You're joining me with Pastor Slaughter on another segment for Couples Retreat, and we are talking about investing. What's your return on your investment? And we are talking about marriages and relationships. So this segment, we'll be talking about that, and we're looking for everyone to join into the discussion, you know, tweet, you know, make a comment. I'll be looking and something that you want to share or you want us to share with others. Please do not hesitate to, um, you know, put your comments in and we thank everyone for joining us today. And I will turn this over to our own Pastor Slaughter. All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank God for your presence. Uh, thank God for this beautiful day today in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, we're just excited to be here, man. Um, we got a really good topic. Uh, really, really, really good topic. Uh, done some studying. Uh, Lady Monica has really gone into great uh, depths into studying and preparing. Uh, for this segment. So we appreciate you guys being with us. Um, so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and open up uh, in prayer. And then we're going to um, read scripture and um, jump right into um, to the segment. Join prayer? Or Father, we thank you, God, once again for, for your love, for your grace, for your peace, and God, for your son, Jesus. Lord, we ask that you would make your presence known on tonight. God, we ask that you would breathe on us, Father. Speak through us that someone may seek to better their marriage, better their relationship, that someone will make a decision to stand on your principles in their marriage. Father, let your peace roll tonight. Let your Holy Spirit be set free to do whatever and however it wants to do. And we shall give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. And Father, I say a special prayer right now for my brother, Pastor Sean, as he gets ready to bring a word tonight at the our Mother Church of Enrock. We ask you to touch him and cover him in the blood of Jesus. Speak through him, Father, and wreck the house yes, God. the only way that you can. Use him as your vessel in the name of Jesus. God, we love you and we thank you. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, and so scripture for today will come out of um, Ephesians. Um, thank you, baby. Chapter 4 and verse 29. No foul language should come from your mouth, but only what is good for building up someone in need, oh, wow. so that it's good, it gives grace to those who hear. So I read from you Ephesians 4th chapter in the 29th verse. Awesome. All right, so we're going to go right on into our segment. And, um, you know, when you think about while you're sitting there, I hope you have pen and paper and you're thinking about um, the topic, what's your return on your investment, um, just jot some things down that maybe you have done you know, to invest in your marriage. Um, okay. Okay. Um, and what you look to do. And maybe at the end of the segment, you may, something may have been said that, you know, you can, you know, implement in your marriage. But know this, every relationship in marriage is different. So everything doesn't fit every relationship. So don't feel like you have to make your spouse fit in this box for it to work. You have to have an open mind. You have to have prayer. Mm. Um, you have to have God first. So God, prayer, open mind, and you have to have communication. So 
and before I go deeply into the um, into the segment, Pastor Slaughter want to make some comments. Amen. So tonight, um, what is the return on your investment? Um, we we want to, I guess, set the foundation for your mindset tonight, and that understanding that marriage is work and if you have no investment there is no return mm, that's awesome. you know it's just you can compare it to the world mm -hmm. i can look at the stock market all day long and look at it see it going up going down and I can say, I wish I would have invested there. I wish I would have did that. But if I don't have nothing invested, if I don't have any money in a stock, then I can't expect to reap the rewards when I see the stocks go way up. So in order for us as married people in Christ Jesus do not be fooled by the enemy thinking you can just have the most extravagant wedding all your bridesmaids and groomsmen dressed and you in a long limousine and y'all going on a beautiful vacation and you had invested all that money in the wedding but did nothing to invest in the marriage. And brothers and sisters, guess what? When you invest in stocks, it's not a one-time investment and then you're done. It's something you have to continue to do and continue to do. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. If you're not investing anything in your marriage, guess what? You're giving the enemy full reign to do what he want, when he want, and how he want to do it. It takes work. It takes investing. And if you, there's no investment, you cannot expect to reap any reward. And I want to I want to put my stuff out there. I just want to say this tonight. One of the ways that I invested in my marriage tonight. Yeah, I know Lady Monica. All right, what does what about to say? No, no, we're, we're being open. But tonight, you know, every Thursday we're, well, Lady Monica gets off a little earlier now, but she's still running even after work, going and dropping the boys off and all that. But anyway, we rush here straight from work every night. And tonight, Lady Monica and Javon got stuff in the car, and we were in the car ready to go, and she said, you got the, uh, iPad. And I was like, oh, and my first thought was like, man, you're supposed to get everything. I could have allowed my flesh to be like, baby, you were supposed to get everything. What are you doing? But I stopped myself and I said, Lord, I thank you that you've given me a wife that's invested enough to get everything in the car and get everything ready for us to go. Investment. My flesh, and you know, I had a little, little day at the day at work, but my flesh was like, oh. Yeah. But I stopped myself. Why? Because I'm investing in this. And if what I have to say, I have to think about what's the long-term effect of that. Is that going to get me anywhere? Is that going to do anything? My God. And then I have to look at, I know my wife. I know what she does in this marriage. I know what she brings. So why do I want to bring my attitude from work? Because I didn't have a little day at work. And be snippy. No, I'm going to invest in my marriage and not go off at the mouth. I know you're looking at me, baby. 
not go off at the mouth. And we had a we've had a beautiful day. Yeah, yeah and nothing. So I just that was just that's one of the ways that you invest in your marriage. Don't sweat the small stuff, man. Don't don't sweat it. I know my baby got a lot to go off. Baby, you look so. All right, so investing in your marriage. Let's, go, Let's put together to do that, which we promise. Let's continue to learn to love, honor, and cherish each other. Because that's what we all said at the altar as husband and wife for the rest of our lives. Sure, you can't do it alone, but it's amazing when you can do it with our hands put into God's hands. So... To help us all do this, we have to sit down and talk about, you know, what you're looking to get out of your marriage. Because just being married is not enough. Mm. You know, that's a start. And sometimes, no, it is always best to start doing that when you're dating and you know that you're going to be serious with someone. you got to get past over the, the puppy love, the gushy love, the huggy love. And it's hard to get past that because that's all you see. You just want to be married. You just want to be with each other. Um, and some people go in, you know, with itineraries. They know, you know, they're going to be married for three years. And by the fifth year, they're going to have their house. And then they're going to, you know, be in their career. And they're going to have the cars that they need. And then they're going to have a family. But where is God and all that, you know? But then having that, having all of that, and even starting it off with the Lord and having all of that, but still not investing because you're thinking that God brought me into this marriage. That's all I need. Right. So I don't need to do anything else. Yep. I'm good. Yep. You know, as a man, he thinks all I have to do is provide. Yep. I don't have to do anything else. You know, I want to share something in our household that happened. Um, our uh, youngest son, Javon, he is dating. Okay. So he, um, him and his girlfriend had a relationship hiccup and they were um, on a break and so he came to John and I which he do you know talking about relationships so he can get a better understanding and um, you know he was telling us the situation and John said to him he said okay look I'm gonna say this to you if it means anything to you you have to invest time so just being together um, with that individual is not enough. So, and he explained to him, you know, what it is to be a man in a relationship and what a man needs and what a woman needs. And he said to him that a man um, needs respect. You know, he has to be loved. Man, men want to be respected. And women want to be protected and loved. So... You have to talk about those things. And because we're in this marriage, it doesn't stop here. It doesn't stop that we are married and, oh, God, thank you just for this marriage. We thank you, God, and we don't do anything to keep it going. So, you know anything you want to say? No, I you want <laughs> so, my first thing that I had down, and John may have something different, is treat your spouse like they matter. You know, what does that mean? You want to go into that? Okay. So treat them like they matter. Let me tell you, one of the things that I'm an early riser, okay? So I'm up at 4 in the morning. That's the only time I can spend with the Lord. So I get my hour in. Then I prepare breakfast for my entire household every morning. Um, and then I get myself ready for work. But when my husband comes out about 5.30 after he's done his devotion, I'm like, come on in, you know? And I go over and I give him a hug um, because I want him to know that he makes me smile when I see him. And that does my heart good that God woke him up and giving me another day to spend time with him. It may sound corny to some of you all, but I thank God for my gift. And I let my gift know that I appreciate him. So treating my spouse like he matters, you know, as wives, we get caught up. Well, it should matter. I cook, I clean, you know. Um, I sit and maybe talk to you, but there's more to that. You know, you have to be a part of your spouse's life 
that maybe your spouse enjoy. So treating your spouse like they matter. Um, hold on a second. Oh, okay, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. And, and, and with that, that doesn't always mean you feel like mm. treating your spouse like they matter. You know, one of the things I love, and I could go down a whole list, with Bishop Ellis has always taught us, it's a not about, you know, serving God is not about how you feel. It's about what you know. Mm, that's awesome. Feelings are going to change. Same thing in marriage. Feelings are going to change. Guess what? It's sometimes I come home from work, I don't feel like doing nothing but plopping on the couch, going to sleep, and doing nothing. But when I see my baby, or she, if I'm home before her, or she's going out to groceries, she comes in, first thing she says, baby, and I get up, baby, and I go hug, and we kiss, and I we do those things. So my point through that whole thing is, and, and, and let me say, I'm just feeling this in my spirit. Don't think the things that we're saying that we do in our household, like she gets up every morning and cooks. Brothers, that may not work in your household. You see what I'm saying? You have to do what works in your household. But when you do it, do it to the glory of God. And do it with all that is in you. You can't look at our marriage, or we can't look at your marriage, or I can't even look at my parents and say, well, my parents did it like this and did that. So we need to do it like this and that. No, we need to define what works for us in our marriage and then it's our responsibility to give it to God and do it to the best of our ability in Christ Jesus I could go on I feel like preaching now Let me... and also you know if your marriage has been neglected you aren't going to be able to rush the course of correction so if you have, um, you guys been having some hiccups, some rough spots, and you've been talking to your girlfriend, or you've been talking to a, a male friend, and they're feeding you, one of the things you have to be mindful who's feeding you. Um, I don't talk to people that, first of all, that are not married. Okay. Good, I, I don't talk to godly people that's not godly because I don't need a worldly person telling me what God has said about my Gotta marriage. Watch. Watch. So um, I, I don't talk to anyone about my marriage. And um, so with that, you have to be mindful that, you know, fixing correction is like a, and I wrote it down here, it's like drops of water filling a bucket. The slow dripping of negative makes for a heavy load. So dump it out and begin investing your drops of intention, kindness instead, and day after day investing your spouse in the health of your relationship. So that just means that you 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 have to take some of those things that you were so angry, the ones that were straining your marriage and holding, bound, binding your marriage, and first you gotta go in prayer. You know, you know, we, you have to serve God together. There's no, you know, I'm going to church and John is at home. This thing is, is you have to do it together. God didn't put you together to be separate. So I know you got something to say. You're over there itching. Um, so be careful when you're looking for correction, when you're looking to correct things in your marriage, because um, you begin you begin to make lists for your spouse to be corrected, and you're not correcting yourself. So. Girl, say that thing. Two things. Man, that was so awesome. One Please be prayerful about whose hand you're putting your marriage into. Be careful 
who you're talking to. It's real easy to talk to that brother or sister at work because, you know, and I'm just learning this because last 10 years I've owned my own business. So I've done my own thing. But I'm learning this. We spend more time with the people at work than we do with our families. So it's easy to get caught up in what's going on at work and you talking to the, to the girl at work or to the brother at work and they giving you advice and, da, 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 da. and I'm not saying everybody at work ain't saved and they hell bad. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying, you got to watch who you get so comfortable with. And now you're sharing what's going on with you at home with that individual. And then something else that you just said, baby, about the drips. I love that. And what I got when I heard that is that it's never too late. To dump that old water out, dump it out, dump it out. <laughs> and refill it with some fresh, yeah. good God, girl, that will preach right there. <laughs> dump that old water out <laughs> and start over with some fresh. Dump the uh, good girl. Dump, I just gotta say, look, dump the old water of negative talking. Yeah. If you if you've been doing that, baby, if if I've been doing it, my wife, baby, forgive me. I've been wrong. I, I'm ready to make a change. You know, I don't like living like this. I don't like not wanting to come home. I don't like not wanting to be around you. I don't like wanting to take the long way home. I'm ready to make a change. Dump, good God, I'm a, dump that old water out. Let me tell you. And it's just that easy. You are a decision away from having the marriage Hallelujah. Lord, I feel your presence. Having the marriage that you want and you desire. My God, my God. You ain't got to point at that family and say, I wish I could be like that. You can say, God, that's what I want. And I'm ready to make a change. Hallelujah. Good God Almighty. Woo! Girl, you didn't get this thing. Woo! Jesus. So I don't know how we move from that, but um, oh, girl, that's good. You just got. Ain't never too late. It's not, you never. know. And I was talking to a dear friend of mine, and we were talking, and she was saying how you know in her her marriage, her and her husband wasn't close. You know, they were they were, but they went through some things, and she was raising her sister's kids, and she had her kids, so her husband just got pushed back and got pushed back. And that built up resentment on her part for her husband. And now all those people, God has moved all those people out of the way. Now it's just her and him. And she's now realizing the relationship they didn't have. And how, you know, she didn't put in the effort that she was looking for him to do. And she said that, you know, like, because John and I, I... When he gets off from work, we talk to each other until he walks to the door and be on the phone. Be on the phone. <laughs> she said that when she got off from work, he called her and she talked until she pulled into the yard. Aww. Never did that before. Aww. And that it's nothing so but awesome. God, you know, it's just a blessing. So but awesome. you have to dump out that old water if you want Ooh, something fresh. I have to that this week. <laughs> you want something fresh, you got to dump out that old water. God, so, so God can be a blessing to your marriage. Because Amen. let me tell you, why be in a relationship that you just, you can't stand the sight of that person? God did not, we have forgotten what marriage was about. This ain't my buddy. You know, this ain't somebody I'm just hanging out with. This is my partner. This is the man that God said, Monica, this is your husband. This is going to be the per your protector. This is the one that's going to come to me on your behalf. So then why would I lay next to this man every night and not enjoy my marriage, not enjoy what God has given us, you know, I was talking to someone and I said, you know what, it gotta be something better. You can't accept, you know, how your spouse is. You got to. So one of the things that we neglect in doing is praying together. Not John and I, because we pray every night. And I ain't trying to put our marriage on a pedestal because oh, we God. have issues just like everybody else. Just like he Jeez. said that, you know, um, about the, ta the tablet that was left upstairs. 
well, I knew he was, because we're connected, that he felt some type of way. And in my mind already, I was going, well, dang, you know, I we brought everything down to the car. You need to took an inventory. Of, right. But you know what? I said, uh-uh, God, we ain't letting that happen. Let that go. I'm not going to, you know what? Because I told him that God has laid in my spirit that this is the gift he's given me. So we're not, I'm not going to hold and harbor stuff that... He may do that. I may do that. May shake, shake us a little bit. I'm gonna let that last for a minute, and then I'm gone. I'm moving on because it's not promise, you know. This day, this night, the morning, it's not promise. So I want to enjoy every second with Him, and even when it ain't all that good, I'm gonna go away just for a second. I'm coming right back. I'm not going to allow that to fester. I'm not going to allow that to keep me from enjoying what we have together. So um, another thing that I've written down that your marriage is immune to problems. No marriage is immune to problems, but applying God's principle in marriages build a very strong foundation. So, um, and another thing I wanted, another topic we're going to move on to is serving your spouse. You know, um, Slaughter and I have a problem doing this in a good way. We always want to do for one another. And one of the things that it says in the Bible, outdo one another in showing honor. And that's in Romans 10 and 12 and 10. As Christians, we are called to outdo each other in showing honor. And that includes our spouse. Imagine if both husband and wife consistently strive to outdo each other in showing honor. That is what I call a healthy competition. You know, so we should we shouldn't compete about who gets to make the most decisions, but engage on bitter fights and also seeking to dominate each other. We're not going to do that. That's not what we're going to do. Our goal is to outdo in one another in showing honor and to commit to being commit being committed to honoring our spouse when we honor our spouse they see god through us this makes a healthy marriage yeah that um man that is just so powerful you know and and and, and in that you know one of the things that we have to realize as men and women of god is that you have to fight yourself you can't, and we can even take marriage out of the equation. Just being a Christian, being a man and a woman of God, there's things about you that ain't right. And I said ain't on purpose. That ain't right. And guess what? That's okay. Because God accepts us as we are right in our sin right in our attitudes, right in our mess. He accepts us right as we are. But what we have to do is fight, good God Almighty, fight the good fight of faith, which says, you know what? I know I can be selfish sometimes. Well, I'm going to fight. I know being selfish is not like God, so I'm a fight. And God, I need you to help me. I need you to help me fight the selfishness awesome. that I have within me. And I'm just using that as an example, because I, my baby, no, I give. I, she know I will suffer before. She know I'll give her my last, last, last. But what I'm saying, you have to be humble enough to look in the mirror and say, God, show me me. And show me where I need to improve my life. And then, where can I improve my marriage? Because guess what? You can't improve your marriage if you ain't improving you. You can't point at her and think, oh, she need to, she need to, she, she. No, you need to look in the mirror and it do you. I know you bubbling up. <laughs> I, 
I just want to say another way that we can honor each other is by our tongue. You know, pray for them rather than gossip. Um, offer encouragement rather than criticism. Um, honor them with your time. Value the time with your spouse and spending time um, other than being on social media or watching TV. Um, focus on their strengths, not their weaknesses. He's itching, guys. I'm He's sorry. Itching. He's I'm itching. sorry. I'm sorry. Just real quick. So that time thing, get that means, guess what, brothers? There may be a movie she wants to watch, and you may have no interest in it. But guess what? Deny yourself for the sake of her. Do some things she wants to do. And the reverse side of that, sisters, you may not care nothing about football, basketball, baseball, golf, or nothing. But instead of coming in there, what you watching? I don't want to watch that. You know, listen, can we turn something else? Come in there and just not say nothing and just sit down next to him. And he going to look at you like, why ain't you saying? I just want to spend some time with you. I, I want to watch the game with you because you watching it. Now you talking about getting to a man's heart? Woo! And she is the master. This girl can write a book on how to get to a man's heart. And I'm not just talking about me as a man. I'm talking about her father. <laughs> she got her daddy like this and her husband like this. Why? She knows how to talk to a there's a there's a message that every married couple needs to listen to and it was preached by uh, Eddie Long who's passed away but look this up on Facebook every married couple needs to, to watch this uh, video they put it on the uh, put it on the site or, 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 while we're talking um, the name of it is we don't want Delilah, we want you. And that man broke that thing down about the characteristics that Delilah had that made Samson defenseless and the characteristics compared to the characteristics most wives have that push their husbands away. Watch that. Bishop Eddie Long, we don't want Delilah, we want you. I guarantee you it will bless your marriage. Husbands and wives. I don't know how to spell okay, Delilah. Okay, yeah, just, yeah. yeah. Delilah, I, I don't know how to spell it. Yeah. So we don't want Delilah, we want you. Two more things. Um, have accountability. You know, um, for your reading, go to Galatians um, 6 chapter um, verses 1 and 2. But be each other accountability, um, but also build trust, trusting relationships with others and give them permission to ask you how you're doing. Have, having the accountability will keep you on your path. Um, and sorry, and be transparent with your spouse. You know, um, John and I, he will say, I'm going to be vulnerable right now. That's his way. Or that's my way of saying I'm going to be transparent and not to hold what I'm saying for another argument or to bring it up again. That once we have this conversation about us being transparent, you then won't look at me side eye to say, mm, I thought you were thinking that all along. Right, right. So you want to build trust. A safe zone. A safe zone. Yeah. You know, I think we've yeah. talked about that. You know, if you go back to our previous um, couples retreat, it's like a theme that we're saying. And because it may get repetitive, it's because God's word throughout the Bible kind of 
says some book says the same thing. So being Mark. yeah, Matthew, Luke. Mark, and Luke. Yeah. So being transparent is not about him giving me giving him or him taking that um, time to to use that against me. It's allowing me to okay. I have to get this off my chest, and it may be ugly, or it may be sad, or it may be disturbing, um, but since you're my partner, you're my friend, you're my husband, I feel like if anyone I can say this to, I should be able to say it to you. However, be mindful that whatever you're saying, that it's in love, you know, you're not, and even if you're being transparent about yourself, just be mindful about what you're saying because the same as you want them to show you grace, you gotta give it in grace. That's good. Yeah. That's good. You gotta give it in grace. You have anything you want to say? Go right ahead. So and so now we're going to move on to one that people don't talk about a lot, you know. Um, we skim we tend to skip over it and that's the intimacy, you know. Um, some people get uncomfortable in talking about it. Um, the things that happen be beneath the sheets could greatly strengthen your marriage, okay? And it's important to devote time and energy to ensuring that you're having a healthy sex life because God didn't put us together to live, go to church, read the Bible, pray together. You know, he put us together to enjoy one another and that's the two of you, right. not you and Mary and Jim and your husband and wife, but the two of you. So a sex life in which both husband and wife are fulfilled. Um, be open about your sex life. Talk about it. Um, some people don't like to talk about it. You know, back in my parents' days, I, you know, I don't think they talked about it. I don't really think. I don't think they sat down and have a conversation about, you know, making that time. I think it was like, if my mom walked through the house with that red negligee under her robe, and dad had on his... <laughs> I can't even think of that. It's just, those were the signs. They didn't say, you know, we're going to make time for one another tonight. We're going to, um, you know do little cutesy things throughout the day. So, you know, send your wife or your husband a text and yeah. just flirt with little, them all day. You know, touch. little things. Right. Yeah. Hold hands. Rub that back, you know. Um, don't listen to Pastor Slaughter. Commit to pleasing your spouse. It's okay. God said it's okay. Um, Engage in romance activities, whatever that is, you know, that works for your household, and have a strong sex life or a strong marriage. Do you have anything you want to So he, he doesn't want to say anything about that. So um, we're going to move right along. That is all that I have, Slaughter. Um, so, I mean, that was a good segment on my part, unless you have something you want to say. Um, but what I really, really want to emphasize that no marriage is perfect, okay? So don't look for your spouse to be like anybody else's spouse because this is the man that God gave you, the woman that God gave you, and he didn't give him to you. Um, dump that old water out. Start going to church together. Start praying together. There, you have to do something different for something new to happen. God is not going to, he's not, he doesn't have us on a string. We're not puppets, okay? We have free will. So be married on purpose with intention, you know. I, you guys, I still get butterflies when I see my husband's name pop up and in my phone it says my husband and I do that just in case I'm somewhere that I've gotten in trouble or I've gotten ill and they need to go through my phone they don't know who John is so I have it as my husband I have my mom mom slaughter mom Miller my brother my sister so getting off of that but um where was I going with that 
Married oh, on purpose. be married on purpose. You know, don't get up day in and day out and putting on that same uniform that you wear to work and expect for it to bring you joy. You know, you have to put in effort, the same effort you put in into your job to get another position, the same effort you get to clean your car so it looks better, the same effort you put in into going to school and have a higher education. Why stop at marriage? Why stop being married at making your marriage be what you want it to be? And if your husband is not on board, if your wife is not on board, then you need to take your cares to God, you know, and you need to give it to God and go into prayer and he, that changes things, okay? It will turn a a dirty marriage or a dry marriage, a frustrated marriage into a lively marriage. But you have to first establish your faith in God and know that he is able and then just let God do his work. But you have to check yourself to make sure that your heart is right. I'm just listening as you're talking. The song that's being played, we need you to survive. Listen to that. Mm -hmm. And as we come to a close, as we come to a close, as we come to a close, one of the things that I want to say is, beloved, we can underestimate the power of prayer. I, I think we get so caught up in life and everything that's going on around us. We, we don't take time to pray. Uh, and, I, and I'm talking to pastors, bishops, deacons, ministers, elders, singers, any and everybody. I, I, sometimes we get so, you can even get so caught up in ministry and you're not caught up in prayer. Prayer is just something you do because we got to open up services, open up with prayer. Who's going to pray? Okay, you go ahead and pray. And then we go on and, 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 and we don't embrace what prayer really is and how powerful prayer is. I dare you every night, I dare you take your mate by the hand whether if it's before you go to bed or while you're in bed and you pray over your marriage. I dare you to do it. And I guarantee you, God will show up and he will. Let me, I'm just going to say, I'm just give this testimony. No, I ain't going to go that there. Okay. So. Is that okay? Okay, so don't underestimate the power of prayer. And, and see, I was about to say something, but because it was concerning both of us, I wanted to touch bases with my wife and say, Do you think so? Being together. Okay, so Jesus is challenge. I challenge every cup, every relationship, every marriage for the next month. So we're in April the 18th until May well I'll say I don't really know. Let's just say from here for 30 days. I challenge every husband and every wife every night before you pray and think, talk to God about, talk to each other about what you want to pray about to 
to improving your marriage, the things that you want God to move. We're talking about your marriage. We're not talking about anything outside the marriage. We're talking about the marriage because before there was a church, there was a family. God created Adam and Eve, and then the church came. So God don't want you, want us, our churches, our church starts at home. Husbands, you are to protect your wives and be that that protector. So when there's something coming at her that you're blocking that, so you got to stay in prayer to do that. And wives, we are to nurture. We're to keep our family nurtured. That love, you know, you got to have a balance. So, but what I'm saying is, I challenge every relationship, husband and wife boyfriend and girlfriend to pray to pray every night on the phone before you go to bed or or before you go to bed and go to sleep the prayer doesn't have to be long and every night John and I we take turns you know sometimes you do five nights sometimes I'll do it but I challenge you to do that and to see the difference in your marriage halfway through I guarantee you and Satan is gonna fight you oh, yeah. okay oh, yeah. he's gonna say oh I'm tired we're okay we'll pray in the morning we'll pray and tell us yeah we John both of us have done it so <laughs> so know that it's not gonna be easy journey because everyone said oh well, we can do that we can pray Satan is gonna fight you okay but pray with intention have some things jot down that you want God to move in on your pray, on your marriage. You know, pray with intention that God is going to do what he said he would do. Trust him. Amen. And, and just real quick, I, I typed it, but the, yeah, no, but it's, it's not a book. It's actually a video. Oh, it's a book too? Oh, oh, so he did make it a book. Okay, so he made it a book. But I need you, I want you to watch the sermon. You can get the book too. The book probably goes in more detail. But look at the video on YouTube. All right. So with that, we're going to come to a close. Um, we thank everybody for, um, for coming. We thank you for your presence. Those that are here. Those that may be online, we thank you for attending. We pray. I know we were blessed uh, by it. Yeah, this this is good. This is good. And uh, we ask that you would join us uh, this Sunday, Easter Sunday. Easter, Easter Sunday, Resurrection. That's right, Resurrection Sunday. It ain't. We're gonna give it the world nope. word. We're gonna give it what what it is. Resurrection Sunday. Come out and join us. Um, 8.30 a.m. Sunday morning, 3331 Blue Ridge Road. And we also ask that uh, you would plant a seed in the ministry. Um, your tithe, your offering, uh, whatever God lays on your heart. Um, we ask that you would take this time and those that are here, we have the bucket here over to our side. Uh, and you can come after service and give. Um, but you can go to our website, TMTWC. Dot org, click on give, and there are multiple ways that you can give on there. Is that it? Oh. Um, and don't forget to join us this Sunday at 8:30, and then every Thursday there is something going on. So next Thursday we will be having Bible study, and Pastor Slaughter is talking on the the seven churches. And if you missed the last. Um, Bible study, go to our YouTube channel, go to our um, Facebook and review it. Amen. Amen. All right. Father, we thank you. God, we thank you for your presence on tonight. Thank you, God, for speaking and having your way. Lord, we uh, pray that something was said tonight that blessed a couple. Something was said tonight that gave a marriage just a new breath and new revelation. God, we ask that you would cover every marriage that is watching now, that is here now, or that sees this video right now in the name of Jesus. Insert yourself, Father, 
in that marriage, resuscitate it, remove any doubt, any fear, any past hurts, for in the name of Jesus, I cover them right now in the blood of Jesus. God, have your way, for we know that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. God, we love you and we thank you. Go with us and keep us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, God bless you guys. We appreciate you. We love you. And uh, we will see you on Sunday, 830. God bless.